Hi. Are you singing? Uh, Are you singing? Uh, it's your birthday. Did you know it's your birthday? Yes. Did you know it was your birthday? Huh? You're one year old. Yeah, you're one year old. All right, so today is Everett's birthday, and I have to make a cake. I've got to clean my counter off first, and it's nothing special. Like, it's just from the Wilton website cake. Um, but we're going to talk about Everett today, and I thought this would be a really great time to talk about um, just our story with getting pregnant with Everett and how it happened and um, attributing a diet change to that and how we dealt with in secondary infertility and how I think that the ketogenic diet helped us get pregnant with Everett nine years after our first one so nine years almost of trying for a second one so all right let's get started Since Everett decided to fall asleep first, I will make the talking version of this video first uh, instead of making the cake. But so, if you followed me for any amount of time, um, you know that in 2009, our first son was born, and we um, <clears throat> we didn't prevent pregnancy from happening. About two years, about well, about a year after he was born. Um, I had actually gone back on birth control uh, maybe a couple months after he was born and I didn't want to, but I felt like that was the only way to do family planning. Of course, I know better now. <laughs> and um, so in the beginning though, with our first son, it took us about four months to get pregnant with him which doesn't seem like a lot, but it does feel like a lot when you are wanting to get pregnant. <laughs> so about, I don't know, five or six years later, I don't remember the exact date anymore. Um, we did get pregnant and um, we didn't know about it and I had a miscarriage and it was so early that, you know, I didn't even know I was pregnant, didn't have, um, you know, I didn't have any bonding that had happened or anything and, and it was a horrible experience, but, um, I was, I got through it pretty well. So fast forwarding to, uh, 2018, I really wanted to get healthy. Like we were already eating healthy, um, just from homesteading and living an organic lifestyle. But when you're overweight, eating healthy does help, but you really have to go into a carb or calorie deficit in order to lose a substantial amount of weight. Otherwise, you're just maintaining the weight that you currently have. And so I am young. I just turned 33 <clears throat> this month and I wanted to be um, fit and and healthy at a young age, especially if, um, you know, I, ha I had an older son, He's, he was nine at the time. Um, and I just wanted to be around for a long time and be able to, to run with the boys and be healthy and fit and not have to worry about getting out of breath and things like that. So I decided to go on the keto diet. Now, let me just preface this with, it wasn't a medical keto diet. There is a medical keto diet that is extremely strict and you, it's literally like an elimination diet, no sugar, um, 
no real carbs at all. Um, this was the modern trendy keto diet where you eat high, high protein, high fat diet and low carbs. Now you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. I like simple. I need simple. So I made it very simple. I just watched my carbs. So essentially it was a low carb diet. Um, I only ate 25 to 30 carbs a day. There were maybe like one day out of the weekend where I would eat something else and that was fine. Um, I truly believe that rewarding, not rewarding yourself, but being lax just one day a week is fine. Um, I was also lax in that I am a chocolate lover and so I would um, eat like just three or four chocolate chips every night after dinner. And that kind of helped me with my sweet tooth. So I was eating 25 to 30 carbs a day. I was eating lots of good fat, lots of good protein. And uh, when I told a nutritionist friend of mine what I was doing, she goes, oh, you're gonna get pregnant. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Why would you even say that? I had come to terms with not having any more children. In fact, I was hoping we didn't have any more children at that point because, um, you know, my oldest son was older. I, I had a career. I had things I wanted to do. Um, and just, you know, you eventually come to terms with not having any more kids. And so you move on with your life. And um, she told me that and I'm like, no. But I will tell you, the thought had crossed my mind when I first started. So anyhow, I it was a lazy keto diet. I was, um, I was pretty strict during the week and then I was kind of lazy about it during the weekend. And the way I took it was, you know, everybody says, well, every day is a new, new day. Well, if I did that, I would have failed every single day. The way that I was able to stay on it was by making it simple. I just ate meat, vegetables, cheese, that's it. I didn't try any of these fancy keto uh, recipes, maybe one here and there, but I knew that if I did, I would eat tons of it and then it would not be low carb at all. So um, it was all about servings and portions for me and what I was eating, not necessarily all the other fr you know, frills and whistles. So my typical keto day looks like getting up. I intermittent fasted. So from about seven o'clock at night till 10 or 11 o'clock, sometimes even 12 o'clock in the next day, I didn't eat anything. I would drink water. I would drink bulletproof coffee. Um, if I was really hungry, then I would eat some fried eggs and salsa or, um, you know, something that was no carbs at all like just sausage and cheese or sausage and eggs or, or an omelet or something like that. Um, and then at lunch, I would eat something simple, lunch meat and cheese, uh, some kind of meat and cheese, um, really no carbs at all. And then at dinner time, it was harder for me because the rest of my family wasn't doing keto. And so I would either make a keto friendly version of what they were eating for myself, or I would eat what they were eating and just consume all of my carbs at dinner time. So that made it really easy for me. So I started that the beginning of July in 2018. I was pregnant by September of 2018. <laughs> so it only took about two months two and a half months before we got pregnant. And to say it was a shock is an understatement. I mean, you, we're talking about not getting pregnant and not having a baby for nine years. And so it's literally like starting all over again. And so I also had a conference to plan, which was, was difficult. Um, because I was sick. So from, um, well, so I, I got pregnant in September. I didn't find out until almost the end of October. And by that time I was at my lowest weight that I had been in about 13 years. And, um, it was hard because when you find out that you're pregnant after losing all of this weight, like the first time in 13 years that I've been able to really lose a lot of weight, health, healthy, I was the most healthy I'd ever been. I felt so good. Um, 
now I'm pregnant and I'm slowly watching myself balloon back up again. So I found out I was pregnant the, towards the end of October. Um, from the beginning part of November through January, um, I was sick as a dog. I was so sick. I could not, um, I couldn't eat meat. I had meat aversions my entire pregnancy. So I really had to find, We I did try to do a lot of keto on during my pregnancy as well, but it was very hard for me because all I wanted were carbs and things I shouldn't eat. And so towards, the, I was able to maintain my weight. I didn't start gaining weight at all until I was about 20 weeks pregnant. And when I had Everett, um, I was back down to my pre-pregnancy weight within two weeks of having him. Now, <laughs> just like I did with my first, I'm actually almost up to where I was before I started keto in 2018. And so I told myself that I would wait until Everett was a year old. I, I have been nursing him. Um, I didn't want to try any crazy diets in case it affected my milk supply. I already had a low milk supply. And so I had tried, I've tried keto here and there while nursing him. Um, and if anything, I probably saw an increase in my milk supply or an increase in the fattiness of my milk. Um, but it still is just, it's just scary. So now he's a year old, he's a year old today. And so on Monday, this coming Monday, I'm hoping that um, I'm gonna get started on keto again. But the one thing that helped me, and I think it's important for people to understand, like I was saying before, people will say every day is a new day, take each new day as it comes. Well, if I did that, I would be, you know, 500 pounds because I would ruin every day and be like, okay, well, today's a bust. I'm just gonna eat whatever I wanted to eat and then go tomorrow. My motto the entire time was every meal is a new meal. So if I screw up on breakfast, I'm not going to screw up on lunch and dinner. If I screw up on dinner, then I'm not going to eat a lot of it, you know. So if I took each and every meal and I did bad one meal, okay, I'm going to do better the next meal. I truly believe that that's what helped me keep losing weight was taking it each meal at a time. Not saying, oh, I ate a horrible lunch. Well, this day is the best. I'm, a, you know, I'm just going to eat whatever I want to. No. Okay, lunch was a bust. I'm going to eat a better dinner. Or I'm not going to eat any carbs at dinner or, or whatever it was. So keto was a success story for us. I, and I truly believe that it all works together. I truly believe that it was the Lord leading me um, to go to this diet because I don't think that outside of that, that I would have been as strict enough to keep on it. I mean, look at me. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to go back. It wasn't even, it wasn't horrible. It was a great diet. I was not hungry all the time. It was wonderful. But, um, I believe that Everett is here for such a time as this, for whatever reason that is, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day as to why I think that. But, um, so I attribute Everett to the keto diet and of course the Lord. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how the keto diet works. Cause if you're here, you might be saying, well, how did that work? Or if you're struggling with infertility, you're like, ah, I don't think that's even possible. So there has been success story after success story after success story. There's an entire Facebook group devoted to women who have gone on keto and gotten pregnant after struggling with infertility, which I didn't know until after I was pregnant. <laughs> but the reason that keto can help you get pregnant, especially women who have PCOS or insulin resistance, um, is because the keto diet actually helps cure PCOS and insulin resistance, not treat it, cure it. Now that doesn't mean it can't come back. If you decide your lifestyle's changing, you're going to go back to the way you were and be done with it. It can just like any disease. When you don't take care of yourself, any disease can creep in. But I thought for a very long time that I had PCOS just due to my symptoms and I wasn't going to make a doctor's appointment about it because I just didn't really care that much. Um, I didn't care enough to do something about it until I went on keto. And so there are studies and I will link them in the description if I can remember to, um, where 
women going on a ketogenic diet have gotten pregnant within two to two months to 18 months of being on the keto diet. Um, it obviously depends on how strict they are and what they're eating and what other underlying issues that they have. But I will tell you, almost every woman I know, whether it's online or personally, that has dealt with infertility and that has gone onto a keto diet has gotten pregnant within within one month of starting, depending on how strict they are, and 18 months of starting. Every single woman I know. And it has to do with your blood levels, it has to do with your sugar, with PCOS, with hormones. Um, going on a keto diet has proven to even out hormones. And, um, and we need to take into consideration other things like what is your age? You know, there are other things that could be affecting you that a keto diet couldn't, you know, fix. But it truly goes to show you that food is your first line of defense. Food is medicine. And what you're putting into your body is very, very important as to what you're getting out of your body. And so um, I feel like that is such a great testimony that it needed to be shared. And I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I just didn't have time to do it. And so I'm sitting down here on Everett's first birthday and sharing it with you. Now, um, there are groups online that you can join to kind of help cheer you on. I have friends that have done it. They've lost a ton of weight and they are doing great. Um, but it's really not just about losing weight. Now, losing weight in general can also help you get pregnant without the hormonal issues. You know, you just losing weight can help you get pregnant. Um, because your body can be saying, no, 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 no. We well, are not ready to have a baby. You're, you're too overweight. Um, I am overweight right now. I, I need to lose about 40 pounds according to society. Um, my goal in is to lose 30 pounds, 25 to 30 pounds by the end of this year. So I don't know how that's going to go. I really need to, um, psych myself out a little bit to get started and make sure I'm stocking my pantry and my freezer and my fridge with things that I can eat because that is the biggest thing. If you don't have something that you can eat in the house that's low carb, you're not going to eat low carb. And so just take the time if you really want to get into it and um, make time for yourself to go grocery shopping and get the things that you need. All right, non-keto, let's make this birthday cake. Okay, I am not the cake person in our family. My sister is the cake person. She makes amazing cakes. And I think she told me one time that I could get good recipes for birthday cakes on the Wilton website. So I've screenshotted them, screenshotted some for frosting, which is that one, which is like vegetable shortening, powdered sugar, all that fun stuff. And then I screenshotted two different ones. I did one for chocolate cake, which seems kind of easy. And then another chocolate cake one. So I need to figure out which chocolate cake one I'm gonna make. All right, so that calls for one and a half stick of butter. See, they make it really easy for you when they do it in sticks. My friend Janet gave me this cute little chicken thing. It's handmade, see? I normally use it as my little soup spoon thing, but I like it. Christmas, I think it was this year. Something like that. It's adorable. Glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. And I feel so free, oh my sweet baby. I was never the one to give up the ghost. No, I was so stuck. I kept on playing my part, wanted to give up cause nothing was changing. But with you it's so clear And now that you're here I see colors in every spectrum Guess I finally learned my lesson Cause you glue all 
the pieces back together. I cannot for the life of me. Oh yes, he woke up. Fine. My other round of cake pan. So I'm gonna have to buy big Oh my sweet baby. All right, so the frosting recipe calls for two cups of vegetable shortening. I don't use vegetable shortening. I use lard or butter, and it's a buttercream. So why, this has no butter in it whatsoever. So I'm gonna use two, I'm gonna use a cup and a half of butter, and then just kind of cut down the recipe from there. Uh, the rest is powdered sugar, salt, vanilla extract. They call for imitation clear, imitation clear vanilla extract. Yeah, no. We ain't doing that. We're using real vanilla extract, but it's so easy to make. I'm gonna have to do a video one day. And then heavy whipping cream. So easy. All right, so the buttercream turned out really good. I'm just gonna stick it in a bowl and stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to ice the cake. I'll be ready to go. I have like zero cake skills, but I don't think that's that bad, right? Backwards, they kind of look backwards. Yeah, yeah, not bad. So, as long as it tastes good, right? If it tastes good, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. 